Hi, Vaughn. Dave Vellante. Dave, nice to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Tight squeeze. Yeah, it's very tight here, uh, but we thank Q Logic nonetheless. Um, so, so, Vaughn, Oracle Open World, you guys have had a long history in Oracle. Um, changing Absolutely. history, right? Um, they're a customer and have been for a number of years. Of course, they're now they're a competitor. So you guys are like frenemies. Um, and so, <laughs> Oracle's at w war with the world. We, you know, we all know that. So, yeah. um, I, I, I wouldn't say competitors. I mean, the, the reality of the world is, is all your partnerships have some form of overlap. Uh, we're all working, I, I think, uh, it's fair to say that we're all working in the best interests of the customer. And so we're Did gonna, you not compete with Sun? We're going to compete. Sun? I mean, we're going to have, yeah, come on. we're going to have you're areas quasi of overlap. Quasi-competitor, I mean, that's, that's the way it is in this day and age. Right? Co-opetition, yeah, right? That's right. As I say, John's word is frenemies. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, um, st uh, let's start with um, what you do as a virtualization evangelist. What, is that, what does that mean? Okay. So my role inside of NetApp is a, uh, what I like to call a, a bipolar role. I spend um, a portion of my time uh, evaluating technology, solutions, market um, initiatives, and bring my assessment uh, of these um, items in, back in-house to an engineering group and ask them to uh, advance our solutions, points of integration, right, our value in this space. Uh, that's the more technical side of the role. The 180 degrees from that is the public evangelism piece, which is engage the public, customers, partners, help them to understand what are we doing uh, in this space, making them aware, raising the awareness. And uh, frankly, I think uh, my greatest asset in both of those roles is, is I have a perspective that's not storage driven. It's much more focused around business goals down in the storage and how the storage capabilities can enhance um, the ability for one to achieve those goals versus a storage perspective that's coming back up into the stack? Yeah, and I think you know, NetApp's actually, I, I give NetApp a lot of credit, it's always done a good job of talking the business value um, and, and not necessarily talking speeds and feeds. I mean, NetApp can talk speeds and feeds with the best of them, but um, by the way, I saw in your booth today, you guys got Billy Bean um, at, at, is it two o'clock? Two to four? Oh, is yeah. he going to be there the whole time? Oh, yeah. So Billy Bean, Mr. Moneyball, Oakland A's, very famous book, oh, yeah. Moneyball. Can we, get him on the cube? Oh. can we get him on the cube, John? If anybody can do it, you can. Make it um, happen. So check out the, the NetApp booth. We'll try to get him on the cube. That would be fantastic. But uh, So again, another very interesting spin on business value. I presume he's talking about uh, analysis, analytics. Uh, absolutely. He's yeah. actually much more technical than I think most people give him credit for. Oh, I... I I've inferred these pretty technical. I, mean, guys, uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Kind of a, I'm, I'm kind, of a, kind of a math geek, I thought. But, um, but at any rate, or at least appreciates math, I should say. So I want to talk about those two roles. The, the one where you essentially have to, first of all, prioritize and then sell internally mm -hmm. on those integration points. Where are you getting your best feedback? Uh, is it customers? Is it partners? Is it the development community? Where's it coming from? Yes, 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 but, but talk about those. Sure, so I, I first off, great question. Um, whenever you think you haven't heard a, a, a new, new and, and um, creative question, thank you for laying one out there. Um, in the short answer, it is, it is yes, yes, and yes. Uh, I think NetApp affords me this opportunity to have these um, various channels of outreach to receive this feedback um, and be able to mull it over, boil it, right, boil it down to its core, and then map that back to our technology to see if there's something that we can create. Sometimes some of these uh, initiatives are obvious, right? When we initially deployed data deduplication in the virtualization space, the mind share internally was this is for backup and archive. This isn't for production use case. From there, we, we drove it into that space, not just successfully, but it's led to enhancements in the I.O. Um, that the array processes by having dedupe in the cache, caching algorithms, and we continue to expand that um, type of, of advancements forward. Today, right, that's a, that's a long time success and one that we're, we're noted for, but today, uh, looking at startups, seeing who's doing what in that space, frankly, uh, um, uh, I still think a lot of the storage vendors are, are looking uh, in the wrong space to have the greatest value in this shared virtual infrastructure, but that's, that's my opinion. I think uh, storage constructs really need to uh, evolve a bit 
beyond the, the concept that we have today, which is SAN NAS or, or tomorrow object oriented. I think there's a lot more value that can be delivered in that space. Um, value comes in the format of points of integration, right? The, the, the stickiness and the uh, ability of the platform to enhance the capabilities of the application itself or the infrastructure is, is one component. Um, but where these, where these sources come from? Technology partners, channel partners, customers saying, you know what I would like to have? Um, you know, they're, they're, all, they're all fair game and they're, they're open sources to uh, have creative thought. So you mentioned NetApp dedupe, um, which was an early innovation, I think you used to call it ASIS, if yes, I recall yes. correctly. Did, what was the contribution, if any, that, that your team made to that innovation? Did you, did you, was, or was that just a, an example you chose that didn't have anything to do necessarily with your your efforts. I'm, sure. I'm curious. I, I want an example, so okay. so I can you know, per perfect example. Um, uh, I'll actually even expand the scope. I, I think it's fair to say, around 2006, with the release of VMware's VI3, uh, notions of production use of data deduplication or even NFS was not necessary that everyone was on board with. I, I think there there may have been folks um, who who thought with the advent of server virtualization, it means that we, we will likely see customers deploy on fiber channel, that that's the enterprise uh, format of a storage network. So our team led the charge in both of those initiatives, uh, as well as other areas such as uh, plugins and integrations inside of vCenter, by actually vetting out the value prop, presenting it internally, we would typically get challenged back to show um, points of validation, so performance numbers, market drivers, right? Try to try to uh, align advancements in the market that maybe weren't crystal clear because you didn't have results. But the concept of dedupe really mapped well to the concept of driving up your hardware utilization at the server layer, right? So we could store more data uh, per physical terabyte than what was normally possible through dedupe. So is that storage virtualization? Sure, it is. But does it map to your goal of running more? applications per server blade than, than what you could with physical? Absolutely, so we had to draw some of these analogies and, and win over, believe it or not, really, really smart engineers who make the code happen, but make them, and technical directors and things of this nature, allow them to understand where we can apply the use of some of these capabilities. So you, have to, you have to do internal and external. Oh, you've got to sell, yeah, you've got to sell. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about um, the virtualization space. We were at uh, VMworld a, a few weeks ago, we had Tom Georgens on, a yeah. number of other NetApp guests. You guys are doing a great job in, in VMware land, no question. Uh, we've, we get Wikibon have done a, a number of, uh, of, of research studies on integration. You guys are right there with EMC as, as the leaders, as the perceived leaders sure. within the customer base and the actual execution leaders. Sure. But there are others. I, I don't want Absolutely, wanna, absolutely. You know, three par I think is doing a really good job. The, the Dell Equalogic guys, Hitachi's doing much, much better than they have, but, you, but, but EMC and NetApp stand out. Um, why is it, how is it, that you guys were able to be so successful? <clears throat> was it just you saw the trend coming? Um, were, you, were you just naturally following the market? You know, talk about how that came about, and then we'll sure. talk more about you know, where it's headed. Well, well first and foremost, um, I really uh, value the research and the reporting that Wikibon did around the integration points. I thought that was a very um, large amount of data for you guys to, to, to review, assess, and then, then come forward with your, your opinions. Um, and so I appreciate it. I think it was fairly accurate. Um, not fairly accurate, I think it was accurate. I shouldn't say fairly. Um, I'd like to see you guys continue in that space, um, maybe on some uh, annual basis or something of like that, you know, look yeah, back like and, yep. and, and uh, continue to follow that. Uh, in terms of where NetApp is in, in the integrations and, and maybe even not speaking officially for EMC, but I think NetApp and EMC had some individuals that saw the change in the infrastructure in the form of connectivity and viewed storage as no longer being confined to the array or the hardware platform itself. It's really an end-to-end -end conduit, or construct I should say, and the conduit is, includes the network, includes the virtual disks and the hypervisor. You've got to, um, to, to run in an optimal environment, the ability to, com to coordinate activities through the entire stack down to, the, and map those to the capabilities inside of your platform, um, were really opened up and exposed by VMware. And so for us to, to move forward and then make 
tools that allowed us to provision or have application aware you know, backups or things of that nature um, really became a no-brainer once you understood that the paradigm had shifted from only being an array and that the actual the demarcation point of the storage object was actually this file that the hypervisor was addressing. So, uh, again, I just think it's looking at storage a little bit differently than if you're just looking at the, the you know, protocols and the, the, the chipsets, et cetera, that, that operate inside of your platform. I got to ask you this question. We had Tom Georgens on. We had it on a number of times. He's a great guest. He always has really good insights. Um, Guy's brilliant. And, and when I, he's very smart. And, and you know, I always have to ask, oh, EMC owns, Net, uh, owns uh, uh, VMware, how do you compete, blah, blah, sure. blah. And, you know, I have to ask it, right? Absolutely. And, and it's a fair question. He always has a, has a good answer. But the one that he gave last year at VMworld, I thought, it was, was he, he said it probably better than I'm going to, but he said essentially that EMC's not going to sub-optimize its investment Absolutely. in VMware to try to you know, sell more storage. Absolutely. Um, and I thought, that's true, I've always said VMware's going to be more valuable than EMC someday, mm -hmm. and smart people, you know, credit to EMC for buying you know, VMware, a lot of people wish they had. And then we started thinking about some other things, and I don't know if this is Machiavellian on our part or not, but, but there's a, a scenario out there that was put forth by some folks in our community about the, what, what they call the storage cartel. Okay. So essentially you have EMC and, and, and VMware, and obviously there's, insider action going on there. But then you've got um, EMC essentially saying, yeah, go ahead, VMware, you need to be open with all the other competitors because we'll sub-optimize your Absolutely. value if we don't do that. So there's NetApp and there's HP and IBM and all those companies sell a lot of, a lot of VMware licenses. But the scenario is that um, there is this sort of cozy relationship forming amongst the four or five large companies and of course, the idea is prices stay high. That's right. what the cartel does, right? And it's potentially risks stifling innovation long term. The small companies can't get the SDKs for things like sure. VAAI fast enough. I'm sure you've heard this scenario. Um, but you have to ask that question because as a software company, you would think VMware would want to commoditize the, software, uh, the hardware and make it as inexpensive as possible. I want to give you an opportunity, maybe as a NetApp Net representative, to respond to that. Is that a wacky scenario? Uh, is there any merit to it? What are your thoughts on that? So, so great, great um, insight and um, uh, interesting thoughts that, that um, are being uh, brought up here or suggested. From my perspective, uh, frankly, I tip my hat to, to EMC. They, they are in a very difficult position trying to ensure that their investment can mature and, and um, they need to stay out of the way of the, of the channels that allow uh, VMware to be sold and delivered to their customers uh, at the same time same level, a lot of, um, I have a lot of uh, respect for how VMware manages this relationship with, with one of their principal investors, right? They've, for lack of a better term, have a Chinese firewall in place and, and allow the two entities to be operated as such. From our perspective, uh, I'm actually very happy with how aggressively VMware seeks to pull more storage what has historically been storage-centric attributes into the hypervisor level, right? So mm -hmm. whether we're looking at like I.O. control, for example. Into its or, stack. Yeah, into yeah. its stack, because that allows us to then um, work more on coordinating at, at their level, at a more intimate level with the application itself, okay? So it allows us to advance our solutions and then we can focus on competing uh, in the storage space on the merit of our capabilities to plug into the frameworks that they're creating. Mm -hmm. or on the merit of, of net unique capabilities that we have inside of the platforms. So that levels the playing field. Absolutely, so I, I, I think- For those if, guys get, that get the SDK day one. Yeah, right. so, so if I'm, if I'm so. a startup or a smaller storage vendor, uh, if, if I figure that I'm going to plug into, say, a vStorage API, of one of the many different programs or the array integration of the data protection, et cetera, uh, I probably should consider that that's a pretty level playing field, right. that those APIs are going to uh, have some form of universal appeal across all the storage platforms. The, where you're really going to exceed as a storage company is what can you do in terms of innovating and delivering a product that's outside of those APIs that has the ability to uh, be integrated in the, into the virtualization space and provide value. So I'll give you an example, and I, I know this will be a NetApp centric plug, but uh, we've had a construct of a virtual storage controller. Uh, it's a, a means to partition physical hardware and have multiple logical or virtual, virtual arrays, and each array can can sit in its own security realm or domain. Well, we've been able to leverage that construct to release 
enhance secure multi-tenant designs or to enhance the uh, non-disruptive ability to move a workload between controllers, and we're going to continue to go down that path because what customers are telling us is that they are in, in see, see a tremendous amount of value of encapsulating the storage access to a logical entity and no longer binding it to a physical entity. And now they get to manage their infrastructure assets, right, an array platform, much like a, they would manage a virtual machine sitting on a hypervisor. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I, I mean, I love these scenarios because I'm an analyst and we love to put forth these, right. you know, these controversial statements and things, but I think that ultimately that, what you just said is, is the key because that's what delivers business value. Absolutely. And, and ultimately VMware has to keep continuing to deliver that business value because it's got competitors as well. So, Absolutely. So that's why I think, we, like I say, we like those scenarios, but ultimately you know, VMware's got to compete. Um, I want to talk about Oracle, but this is such a good conversation. I, I, <laughs> we'll come back to that. Hopefully we'll have time, I'm sure we will. I want to talk about big data. We've had Val Bercovici on, um, and uh, John and I were struck. I think we first had him on at the last SNW, and he had a very good perspective on, on big data. I was somewhat surprised. You know, I didn't think NetApp, you know, was associate NetApp with big data, but since then, and do. What are you seeing in your, your first role, looking at, you know, futures and integration and the like around big data. I saw Oracle threw its hat in the ring with a Hadoop appliance this week. Um, what are your thoughts and what's NetApp doing there? So I, I think it's a very interesting time in the market and obviously I don't focus on big data or even databases as an area of, of technical expertise, but the one thing that I am certain of is by the time I finish this sentence, there'll be more ge data generated and being asked to be retained for some you know, long period of time than when I started it. And so scaling is an area that I, I spend a lot of time and thought around, whether it's in the context of the virtual infrastructure or in terms of scaling in terms of big data, right? Storing, uh, analytics of, of those types of working sets, things of that nature. It's, it's a massive challenge and I would, I would suggest to you that when I engage with customers, I think a, a lot of folks are underestimating the amount of data that they're going to be required to store and service five, 10 years from now. Um, so. From a NetApp perspective, uh, our focus is to continue to innovate so that we can support uh, new constructs like Hadoop or the NoSQL databases, right? So the customers that are ready to um, move from their traditional models or, or business applications into these uh, new constructs that are rapidly maturing right in front of our eyes can, can do so. So wh where this is going to flesh out, I don't know but outside of you know, the ability to scale, to well, every customer has the same goal, right? I want to do more with less, and I want to do it faster than I did yesterday. Yeah. Um, how we get there, <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's talk about Oracle a little bit. <laughs> uh, one of the other things Tom Georgian said, and these are my words, not his, but roughly it, it translates into um, the Oracle opportunity. Oracle hates us less than they hate everybody else. <laughs> so that's an opportunity for us. Sure. And it's probably true. I think I've said on theCUBE that, that EMC, in fact, has probably the most to lose from Exadata. IDC released some data today, and he asserted EMC is number one in, in, in Oracle environments. NetApp was actually number two, but in different segments. I mean, right, EMC, absolutely. VMAX, high end absolutely. OLTP, that's their roots, and Exadata is going right after them, there's no question about it. NetApp has an opportunity, EMC, by the way, has a similar opportunity in data protection. Mm -hmm. um, is that manifesting itself into real business, um, whether in the channel or in your direct sales force um, and in the Oracle customer base? Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, I would say it's absolutely a reality. Customers have been, customers have been asking for more maturity in the solutions around virtualizing Oracle. Uh, the areas that they are, are looking for this maturity uh, tend to fall in a couple of buckets. Uh, obviously, performance front center. Everyone, what, what's the what's the tax for uh, uh, the, the gains I, I receive by virtualizing the infrastructure? What's the what's the tax I then pay on the uh -huh. performance layer? Uh -huh. Right. So uh, the second area, and I can go into these in, in, in better depth. But the first area would be performance. The second area is really around uh, the mature maturation of the manageability tools, whether that's um, from a, a looking at applications that let's say like in the backup space. Uh, business continuance space, or probably more relevant of late is in the service level space. How do I gain assurances that my, my application is running optimally when I've got to look at a application layer, a database layout, hypervisor layer, networking storage at the physical layer, right? I've, I've crossed this bridge between application and virtual infrastructure to physical. So I think the maturation of the tool sets in that space allow us to have the assurances 
And then the third area is customers, I think sometimes look at the virtualization layer as a intermediary step. So let's say I'm, I'm heavily vested in Oracle today. I want to start uh, leveraging some of the, the cost savings that are, are available to me through, say, VMware vSphere. Today I want to move Oracle into vSphere. I want to have all these assurances that I can do it successfully, but I also want to be sure that um, after that migration is, is completed, can I leverage that same infrastructure and components should I need to make a change in terms of how I'm servicing that application, right? I need flexibility, I need to have uh, protection to, to make sure that I'm not taking on technology debt over the years, right, at the infrastructure layer. And so we're seeing customers really start to state that uh, flexibility that's inherent in the platform at a hardware layer and software layer is, is a top priority in terms of their, their decision criteria when they're going to make a purchase. And I think NetApp has played well in that space and I think that is a big opportunity for us to continue to drive forward with it, which is let me assure that you can move it successfully today and two years from now when some new innovation hits from VMware or Oracle, et cetera, that you can take advantage of that without having to rip and replace your hardware. Now, Vaughn, I, I realize you're not a deep Oracle practitioner, but I want to talk a little bit about virtualization in the Oracle space and VMware specifically. I mean, it's no secret that Oracle doesn't want VMware installed and running its applications, and it you know, will make customers kick and scream before they go there. Um, nonetheless, customers are going there. And, right? and they kick and scream, and they get support, and they get you know, what, what eventually what they want. There's some, you know, Considerations around licensing and I mean, on the enterprise yeah, level. Right. If they right. pay, they get support. Right. If they don't pay the support, they get go back to physical and then call us. But so, but yes, if they pay, does get great support from Oracle. There's no question about it. Or if they do rack in VMware, which you know, okay, great. Um, but um, I want I want to understand what you're seeing there uh, specifically with regard to Oracle's virtualization sure. strategy and and where does that fit? on the priority list for you? I mean, it's been slow, um, it's been immature, but you know, I understand there's a new release out that's looking more promising. Um, what are you seeing in the Oracle base? So, uh, I think we're seeing two trends. I think customers, when they look at their virtualization layer, are more and more looking at it as a management layer. It's a means where I can um, standardize and tool sets operational processes, that leads to repeatability and the reduction of operational costs. So I think it's fair to say that a significant number of business leaders, say C-level, are looking for standardization within their operations. Conversely, I think the database administrators and folks who, who, who their day-to-day -day tasks live in that world are probably much more comfortable with the one throat to choke approach, right, and are, are worried about um, uh, uh, more worried about the intimate details that affect them and I think probably are more comfortable in the uh, looking at Oracle's virtualization space and I would also suggest to you that they're probably not as, uh, as abreast of all the uh, nuanced differences between a VMware virtualized platform and Oracle. So from our perspective is volume wise today, and again this is always subject to, to market changes, uh, the request for, for Oracle and VMware is, is dominant, but those who, who want an Oracle stack um, is passionate. What's interesting is, is we only get brought into that Oracle stack when the customers say, but I need something that NetApp is offering in the data management space to help me with this. Okay, so that answers my next question is why even bother? If they're going to go with OVM, they're probably going to go with some kind of sun disk drive and why do they need you? Sure. And the answer is because they love you and oh. appreciate what you're doing. And oh yeah, we, we've, uh -huh. it's funny how, um, how pervasive a concept can be. So when you think about um, server virtualization, everyone understands that concept really well. We all, if I say server virtualization, in your mind you think VM, hypervisor, I don't need to say anymore. If I say storage virtualization, we're all like, well, you know, we all get, well that's a gray area, that's many, many shades of gray, we're not clear what that means. Right. So, one of the things that has worked very well for us and why we're pulled into these conversations around virtualizing Oracle is uh, we have a unique ability to change the I.O pattern uh, within these, these data sets by being able to share blocks of data that are cached in the array across multiple database instances. And that's truly unique in a storage, uh, from a storage platform. Historically, a storage array, uh, whatever's cached uh, from one host is only available to be service request of that host or, or subsequent requests from that host. And we break that I.O. paradigm 
uh, with some of our capabilities, allowing customers to scale further uh, without having to necessarily have a, a direct correlation to the, the hardware that they're purchasing. And where that really has an impact is driving down cost in terms of test and development, right? Lab, lab type of scenarios where we've always been very strong. It's also allowing us to have more opportunities as we go up stack into the larger, um, uh, larger databases, customers who, who historically maybe have been on a Symmetrics platform that are looking to say, how can your, your platform best serve you know, uh, my workload? And, and you know, we kind of come at an approach that's different than the classic storage tiering and storage caching, and we start talking about, well, I.O., right? You want to uh, be able to scale your I.O. At, at the hardware level, or do you want to put some intelligence in this and, and, and scale further? And I think that's worked out very well for us. Good, we're here with Vaughn Stewart, who's uh, with NetApp. Uh, great discussion, Vaughn, I really appreciate you allowing me a lot of latitude. Uh, a lot of the latitude on my side, sometimes <laughs> I digress a bit. No, this is good. <laughs> um, um, really would love to have you back on. Uh, NetApp, you know, doing a great job in the marketplace. Um, once a small company, now a big, the, 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 a big company, the, 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 the last big, independent storage company out there. I mean, EMC is really not just a pure play storage company anymore. You guys are. And uh, so congratulations on uh, your success and uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks so much, I appreciate it. Great to see you. Take care, Dave.